and welcome back to Lorcana Villain. My name is Baker and I am the reigning, defending, undisputed Lorcana set champion. Lorcana YouTube, one's up. I was going to drop this gimmick after like one or two videos, but a lot of people are enjoying the bit. So we'll milk it for a little bit longer. But what's up, guys? Um, it's been a minute. It's only actually been about a week, but whenever I don't upload uh, for five, seven days, I always feel like it's been the longest time. But yeah, I've been doing a house move. I've been in the new place for about five days now, but have been without internet. The internet still isn't up and running. At the time of recording, it is um, quarter past two, um, the 18th of April. And the engineer is due today, so if the doorbell rings, then I may end up shooting off halfway through this video. But I'm recording this now so that hopefully by the time it's on, I can upload it pretty much straight away. I actually wanted to do it in the last few days, just so that it was all ready to upload once I had internet. But it's been unpack unpacking to do a whole bunch of stuff. But yes, it's good to be back up and running almost. I do often find it hard to get back into the swing of things after I've taken a bit of uh, time off. Sometimes I struggle with self-motivation and heightening my mood. But to be honest, like I, I, I just I just go through the, mo the most recent videos that I've uploaded and see all the supportive comments. And it's things like that that motivate me to get back in the chair, get back in the game. So thank you to everyone that supported the channel so far. And yes, today we're going to be looking at the top 16 deck lists for a 159 player event that took place in Poland. Uh, the event was on the 7th of April 2024. I actually really wanted to go to this event um, but it wouldn't have worked out with uh, the house move that I had coming up and just uh, just schedule scheduling wise it, it didn't work out. One day I hope to attend but I have some friends that went and it was a big old event. I'm quite late on reporting on it obviously but deck list is what I do so we're going to cover it anyway. And then after this video, you can expect to see my coverage of the top 16 de uh, deck lists for the pack uh, event, the recent 10k. So lots to catch up on, lots to talk about, and obviously we are very, very close to the official set championships launch. For my coverage for set championships, I think I'm I'm not going to do videos of this event, this event, this event. I'm going to do like one video that covers all of the people that won a rock, an enchanted rockstar stitch over a set couple of days. So it will basically be, these are all the deck lists that won a stitch, came in top four in set championships over this time frame. I quite often get my information from inkdex.com, so if you yourself win a stitch and the deck lists and the event information end up on there, I will find it. But feel free, if you come top four at an official set championships, uh, to email me, um, let me know, send me your deck list, let me know the event in question that you uh, participated in. It'd be really great if you could also send a photo of the Enchanted Stitch, or you and the Enchanted Stitch. And if you have a social media handle, like a Twitter or a YouTube or a Twitch, um, let me know that. Send me an e email of all the information and I will spotlight it when I do my coverage. Also, a couple of weeks back, we added some Disney trivia into Top Cut deck lists and they said that seemed very popular. Um, I'm not doing that today, but I haven't forgotten about that. Let Just letting people know I saw the feedback for that was, um, for that was positive. Words all over the place. <laughs> Nothing new there, but I really need to get into the swing of things. But yeah, we are going to do more trivia, but I'll only do trivia if I'm only covering a top eight deck lists. And in this particular video, we'll be looking at the top 16. Now, the top cut was actually a top 32. That's a lot of deck lists. I'm just going to look at the top 16. If you came 17th to 32nd and you watch my channel, I'm really, really sorry. <laughs> I hope you understand. Lastly, a shout out to Crispy Bacon, who was the winner of last month's giveaway for, an, for a Lorcana Into the Inklands Trove. And I am planning to do another giveaway soon. Stay tuned on the channel. Hopefully in the next week or so, I'll have some more information regarding that. But yeah, that's pretty much all the admin. So let's jump in and take a look at the deck lists. And don't forget that this channel is sponsored by Card Market. So check out Card Market for all your trading card game needs. So in first place, we have some Sapphire Steel Lucky Wheel. Um, Mateo is how I want to pronounce that name. I'm probably butchering it. I apologize. But congratulations to you, my friend. So we're looking at all the draw, all the ping, all of the ramp. 
Sapphire Steel has consistently been doing well in tournaments over the past few weeks. Definitely one of the top skill tier decks to run. So let's take a look. We've got a 4-4 line of the Robin Hood. A fantastic ability to be able to gain two lore if we, if we banish a character in a challenge. And we get to draw a card if we are banished in a challenge. So replacing the card is always good. 3-6 stat line. Um, hates uh, Madame Medusa but doesn't mind. Along came Zeus. Questing for two. But one of the most important things is obviously he's a shift three onto our baby Robin Hood to help us sing our five cost songs. So just let it go for some nice spot removal whole new world which is the big theme of the deck just replenish those resources and go 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 and three copies of grab your swords and of course he can sing along came zeus which is only a four cost but that's fine dealing five damage to a character or location so some more spot removal but let it go very important in this matchup for the stout hearted uh, above most things just because this deck can struggle with the resist too Sometimes you see this as a Hades because it's a body that can benefit from the dime. But I like the let it go. It's inkable, singable, so you love to see it. We've got three copies of Mr. Smee with just a fantastic stat line. 3-3, three, three, questing for two on a two-cost inkable. And the ability, we're never going to be able to subvert it because we don't have any captains. But it really don't matter. This is just a fantastic stat line early in the game. Two copies of Benja for uh, for the item removal. Those fishbone quills, spell books, sleepies, flute, lanterns. Lots of items still very relevant in the meta. And he quests for two, which is not bad at all. We've also got two copies of Bell. Strange but special, four cost inkable, two, four. She has a built-in fishbone quill with read a book where we can put an additional card from our hand into our inkwell face down, so more ramp. But most importantly, the favorite part. While you have 10 or more cards in your inkwell, this character becomes a five, well, gains four law. So it becomes a five uh, five law questing character. So this deck wanting to do all the ramp, so Bell works really well with that. I was not a big fan of Bell in previous versions of um, this deck, but with the addition of Lucky Dime, I think she is so, 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 so good. Lucky Dime being a 7 cost uninkable um, Exert, pay 2 Choose a character of yours and gain law equal to their law So if you've got enough ramp If you've got enough ink to play with then And if you've already got the dime down Put down Bell and then immediately tilt the dime So that you can gain Bell's 5 law So lots of pressure We've got 4 copies of Flavisham Which is one uh, pretty much our uh, only other draw engine We're seeing no Beast Tragic Heroes in here So we are all in really on the whole new world But we don't have to be We can get a lot of draw from Flavisham Banishing our items and giving us um, giving us two card draws every time We've got four copies of Cogsworth, a really important piece. Five cost, inkable, two, five, quest for two. Uh, Ward makes him really annoying, hard to remove, and unwind, giving resist one to all of our characters. And being a five cost character, he's going to be able to sing these five cost songs. Um, like I said, Ward just really annoying to remove Cogsworth unless you're questing um, foolishly, uh, or at least taking a risk by questing, because we want Cogsworth nice and, nice and safe. Um, and the unwind ability just really ruining our opponent's maths, giving resist one to all of our characters. The Robin Hood we've talked about. We've got Four copies of Tinkerbell, fantastic as ever. Rock the boat, putting one damage on each opposing character when she's played. And if we banish a character, then Puny Pirate will allow us to put two more ping damage on another character. So just a nice mid-game threat, late-game threat, can sing songs, really gives a lot of board control, makes our opponent think twice about questing. Tinkerbell, still one of the MVPs of the game. We've got two copies of Tamatoa in this list. Eight cost inkable, five, eight, quest for one. When you play him and when he quests, we can return an item from our discard to our hand. So our Lucky Dimes, our Fishbone, Quills are Porpsicle. If we've been removing them with Flavisham to draw cards, or if just our opponent's been playing item removal, that's going to help them get them back onto the board. And of course, Camp Tamatoa gets plus one law for each item we have in play. So if we can get three items, then he becomes a four, uh, four questing character, and just another character that we can tilt with Dime to immediately get that law gain. No Gastons in here, I think, is kind of interesting. I'm a big, big fan of uh, Gaston. The stat line's respectable. The three lore to immediately um, immediately get with Lucky Dime. Helping to find a piece. We are running four copies of Develop Your Brain so we do have some search. One cost inkable. Look at the top two cards of your deck. But one into your hand and one on the bottom of your deck. I see a lot of um, contrasting opinions about how necessary Develop Your Brain is but I think the one that I see the most which I agree with is just this is just a deck that really needs its combo pieces and as the game goes on it's really important to be able to find your key pieces your wheel your along came zeus your flavisham for the draw the lucky dime when you really need it to kind of push for game or the bell whatever it might be i think it's very important four copies of one jump ahead be to be additional ramp we've looked at all these songs and all these items so yeah pretty standard sapphire steel wheel apart from the lack of gaston that is the only thing i find um interesting um not all these decks are running tamatoas um a good amount are it's a good card in the deck i think personally i would prefer the gaston um but led this person to first place in a big old field so congratulations to them i really need to get a new camera it slowly lowers the longer it just sits there <laughs>
So I look back at my screen and suddenly I'm like, I'm only ahead. But yeah, moving into top eight, our other Sapphire Steel Lucky Wheel deck. Um, a few notable differences here. We're running two copies of Captain Hook to be a nice one drop hitting for three, which is a magic number. And it is a captain to allow us to subvert the oh dear, dear, dear ability from Mr. Smee. Not that that's necessary, but hey, sometimes it's really useful. We are running three copies of Mickey Mouse Detective for some additional ramp. The previous deck wasn't doing so. Two copies of Benja for the item respect. Four copies of Bell, a big account here. The same count of two Lucky Dark, same item count in general. Two Dime, four Fishbone, and four Porpsicle. The four Flavisham, the four Cogsworth. We are running one copy of Beast Hard Headed, another card to answer items, but it's another five cost character that can sing those songs. 4-4 four, four is a respectable stat line, and questing for two is pretty good, especially, um, again, it's another character that we can pop with Dime. We are seeing three Gastons here with a developed brain. When you play him, look at the top three cards of your deck. One goes into your hand, and, one, and the rest of the bottom in any order. I just think this is really important search. The deck doesn't have a lot of card draw as it is, especially if you don't hit your wheels. Um, six cost uninkable is perfectly fine. You can normally get this down, down turn four or five anyway after ramp. But yeah, just the fact that he's a three questing character, like with no condition. Like Tamatawa can get up to that amount and, and Bell can get even higher. Um, but just no condition, just Gaston always having this three to work with Dime, I think is really important. We are seeing three copies of Tragic Hero in this beast. Not all decks, not all steel decks looking to run this just because it is so easily... Um, interrupted with things like Madame Medusa or just all the chip damage to assure that you don't get the two card draw but if he does sit there then you just generate so much value so I still like the inclusion of Beast we've got the 14 Inkabel, one Tamatoa in here two copies of Baboom which I really like two cost Inkable action to deal two damage to chosen character or location and the fact that it hits location as well is good, it's nice to be diverse but this is just good as a turn two um, on the play um, against opposing Robin Hood's um, with Captain hook just just one drops that you want to be able to remove immediately this this, this math helps a lot two copies of rise of the titans to eat uh, to immediately remove items and locations we've got item removal in the form of bodies so this is mostly for um locations like uh, queen's castle is always my if i'm facing sapphire steel i always want my queen's castle down as soon as possible because they can really struggle to deal with it so it's nice to have that immediate uh, immediate answer only one copy of a long came zeus i really like this at higher count i think it's such an important piece but we are running a high account of let it go um i think i would prefer to have like at least a 2-2 two, two of these um but still let it go an important card whole, four, four whole new world three grab your swords and then the same item count as we already discussed so yeah some some card differences there the mickeys the hooks the beast the Gato gastons and the hard-headed quite a lot actually the baboons the rise of the titans but a very similar shell so congratulations to james Going back to second place now, we have Daniel with some Amber Steel Flute Song. Nice. To, these, these two decks put it in incredible shifts lately steel amber songs and sapphire steel wheel definitely um the decks to beat i think so taking advantage of all that steel ping and uh, access to early singers like robin hood but amber giving us access to more ways to get the most out of singing these songs and of course the sleepy's flute itself we might as well start with two cost uninkable item exert if you played a song this turn gain one law so we want to get as many of these flutes down as possible and make sure we're singing a song every turn to be getting nice law bumps the entire way, um, the entire game through. Looking at our song package, we've got four copies of the Bear Necessities, two cost Inkable, um, opponent reveals their hand, discard a non-character card of your choice. So not um, much better than, I say better than Urs the, the Emerald um, Ursula. Better probably isn't the right word because that Emerald Urs Ursula is a body in and of itself. Uh, plus it can be bounced and replayed. But this being a song and just, it hits more targets. You don't have to just see a song. You can see a location, an item, an action, all that jazz so their necessity is really strong especially for taking away those key cards like be prepared a whole new world if we don't want our opponent playing it especially because this deck can draw really well without the wheel um so yeah their necessity is really strong four copies of storm rage on for two ping and to draw a card three three strength of a raging fire sorry guys i'll get into it three strength of a raging fire that's what i need i just need to sing get myself more into it uh, to hopefully hit some nice high numbers if we've got a nice wide board three copies of a long came zeus for some spot removal the four wheel for the refresh two grab your swords for the ping and i've already mentioned the sleepy's flutes going to our character lineup we've got a four count of ballroom sensation cinderella one cost ingable one two with singer three so she can sing our bare necessities storm rage on and strength of a raging fire really cheap and 
once you can be a shift option for the two copies of Cinderella Stout Hearted that we're running. Seven cost Inkable 5-5, five, five, shift for 5, quest for 3, resist 2, and the singing sword. Whenever you play a song, this character can challenge ready characters. So we've already said, lot nice big song package is a big part of our strategy. So be also being able to challenge ready characters is going to be really great. The resist 2 makes it hard to remove. Questing for 3, Cinderella Stout Hearted is a problem. One of the main reasons Sapphire Steel decks are running things like Let It Go or Hades. Moving on, we've got a 4-4 line of the Queen. Uh, the 1 drop being a 2-2. Two, two, and the 5 drop, we can shift for 2. So that is our quickest way to sing, a five co um, sing our 5 cost. We'll sing any of our songs, really. 4-3 stat line is respectable. Questing for 2. And whenever she quests, a uh, chosen opposing character gets minus 4 strength. And a chosen character gets plus 4. So we can make these smaller characters hit for nice big numbers. Get us to the sort of numbers that we need to um, banish things like McDonald's. Duck Manor and the Queen's Castle. So lots of use for the Queen here. We've got three copies of Beast Tragic Hero for, for some additional card draw. The Robin Hood package, as I mentioned before. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Pretty standard. Steel Amber Flute Song doing really well, achieving second place in this big tournament. So congratulations to Daniel. Moving into top four, we have our only other Steel Amber Songs list, um, which says a lot that the only two that made it into the top 16 got um, second and fourth place. So a lot to be said there. And a slightly different build here, we are opting to run the Pride Lands, which is a two cost uninkable location. Two to move there, seven willpower, one passive law gain. Any character there gains two willpower while they're there. And if we have a prince or a king there, then we pay one less ink to play characters. So this is essentially just a slightly different Sleep Beast Flute. Um, you don't need the requirement of singing songs to be able to gain the lore, but obviously this can be removed via challenges. Sleep Beast Flute can't, but Sleep Beast Flute is an item, so it's removed by things like Benja, Hard Headed. There are pros and cons to both. The flute been doing well for a while now in this and previous format, but Pride Land's definitely the newest shiny toy, which is proving itself to be just as good as an inclusion. We have the four Ballroom Sensation Cinderella and once again two Stout Hearted Cinderella. Let's like go through the song package. Only three Bare Necessities, four Let the Storm Rage On, four Strength for Raging Fire, four Along Came Zeus. Really like this four, like this four count. Four Whole New World, only one Grab Your Swords. So many of these steel decks are running lower counts of Grab Your Swords. Bucky is going to have his day if this continues. Um, because Bucky Discard I still think is the better discard deck but it just falls on its sword to grab your swords full pun intended um, but yeah the, the less grab your swords counts I'm seeing in Steel Amber decks or just Steel decks in general the more I want to play Bucky I feel like he's getting away with a lot right now um, but yeah just one copy in this deck and then one copy of the world's greatest criminal mind which can immediately banish a character with five strength or more so that's Maui Maleficent Dragon uh, Cinderella Stout Hearted but we can pair it up with with our queen commanding presence and give our opponent's character the plus four strength and then hopefully take it out of, with world's greatest criminal mind. So some nice synergy there. We're running the 4-4 Robin Hood line, the 4 Ariel, who I don't think I mentioned in the last Steel Amber list. Uh, but if you didn't know, Spectacular Singer, which is a Singer 5, so she's a way of um, singing these 5-cost songs cheap, or 4-cost songs. And when you play her, we can hopefully search for a song by looking at the top 4 cards of our deck. We find a song, it goes into our hand. So Ariel, still one of the MVPs of Amber. We've got 4 copies of Rapunzel for an additional way to, do, to draw cards if we don't want to play the whole new world. Definitely one of the strengths of... Um, Steel Amber in general, that it can go either way. If it's more suitable to play a whole new world, if our opponent's been drawing lots of cards, then great, we can do that. And if our opponent plays their hand out needlessly, then we can instead go down the route of Rapunzel. No Beast Tragic Hero in here, but still just another option for card draw. We've got the 4-4 Robin Hood line. We've got one copy of Chernobog, 10 cost uninkable, 9, 9 quest for 3. You pay one less for him for every character that you have in your discard. And when you do play him, all those characters in your discard get shuffled back into your deck, which can be really nice. And we're also running four copies of Simba, Future King. One cost inkable, 1, 2, quest for 1. And guess what? When you play this character, you draw a card, then choose and discard a card. So you see this come up in Steel Amber lists... Um, occasionally anyway, just because it's helpful just to find your key pieces that you need in the first few turns. The Ariel, the whole new world, the Robin Hood, um, Floodborne, whatever it is you need. But a reason to play Simba here is because he is a prince. So if we move him to the Pride Lands, all of a sudden we're playing one less ink for our characters. So great synergy there. Really great looking list. It's good to see Steel Amber's songs having two 
quite quite definitively different. I, I wouldn't say, maybe they're not definitively different. That's the wrong way of put, putting it, because the, the shell is different. But two different ways of running it, for either Flutes or Pride Lands, that both seem to be very strong. So huge congratulations to Rob. Going into top four, we have Specky with the first of our Emerald Steel discard decks. Great to see Specky with a, a really good run in this tournament, rep in the UK. You love to see it. And I met him for the first time about 24 hours after this at the Disney Store for the Media Set Championships. It was great to meet him and was great to hear he had a good result. No stranger to discard, had a very good result in a pack online event a couple of weeks ago. But he has made some changes here. So yes, we want to be as aggro as possible and just to discard guard our opponent's um, hand as well as we can. We've got Prince John here with Ward, so he's hard to remove and quest for two. And whenever our opponent discards, we are drawing cards. So that's one of our primary ways of re um, uh, uh, refreshing our resources. To do the discarding, we've got a 4-4 of the Flynn Folk, who both have the ability if uh, if they are challenged, our opponent has to discard a card. They quest nice and high, and they're cheap. We've also got four copies of Captain Hook to be some nice board control. We've got four copies of Robin Hood here, uh, Beloved Outlaw, with none of the Floodborns. I'm guessing this is just to have another one drop that you can put down, and I suppose even if you're not running the Floodborn, it, the, like... They will assume you are and might play around it. I don't understand this decision, to be honest. I, I, I will definitely ask Specky about that. Um, but a generous amount of low-cost uh, low characters. Going back to our discard stuff, we've got four copies of Ursula to get rid of songs, get rid of those grab your swords to be prepared, anything that's going to ruin our nice big board that we're hopefully drawing. Hopefully building, sorry. We're also running two copies of Daisy Duck. Four-cost inkable, two, three, quest for two. Whenever she quests, our opponent chooses and discard a, discards a card. Wasn't very popular in set two. And you don't see her a lot in discard decks. But I suppose she's just another aggressive quester. I don't think she's the best um, card for discard. But then again, I say that with most of my experience of running discard um decks was with Bucky and turn four you always want this to be a floodborne drop and then turns five six you often just want to be floodborne drops as well but I suppose for this sort of build which I haven't really tried it makes a bit more sense we've got three copies of Friar Tuck four cost Ingable two four when you play him the character the um, player who has the most cards in the hand discards a card be careful playing this if you've got the most cards in your hand you have to discard but four willpower is nice going to keep him out of range of a lot of things and he's another two lore quester We've also got Hypnotize to make our opponent discard, and we can draw a card as well. We've got four copies of Sudden Chill, which is a song which can be sung by our Ursula Deceiver of All, which becomes an immediate our opponent discards too. So that's really nice. Ursula can work well as well with the Let the Storm Rage On, which becomes a draw two and do four damage. And Strength for a Raging Fire, just whatever the number of that is. Double it, because Ursula Deceiver of All is a pretty good card. And yeah, that's all our discards. We want to um, get rid of our opponent's hand. We're also playing two copies of Tiana, celebrating princess four cost on inkable one four quest for two resist two and what you give is what you get while this character is exerted and you have no cards in your hand your opponent can't play action so we, we quite quite often will play out a lot of our hand obviously we want card draw it's nice to draw cards off of prince john um get double draws off of ursula and let the storm rage on but our, our, a lot of our cards are so cheap we can play out our hand just have a nice wide board get tiana exerted so that we don't need to worry about things like be prepared whole new world or grab your swords, all that stuff. We're also running three copies of Baboom, um, which is growing in popularity. Just two damage to a character or location, just offset our opponent's tempo. We're running four copies of Benja, who again quests for two, which is nice, and removing those items, respecting them. And four copies of Mr. Smee, who just has an incredible stat line and, of course, works really well with our Captain Hook. So, yeah, not so sure about this Robin Hood. Um, just an additional one drop, I guess, and, like, make them think you have the Floodborne and potentially play around it. I'm actually wondering if this is a mistake. I will ask Specky myself, but nonetheless, great to see him um, reach top four in Poland. So, congratulations to him. Now to our other Emerald Steel discard, our only other one. We have Patrick making top eight. Uh, very similar lineup here, except we are playing four copies of Beast Tragic Hero for some more card draw. We are running for, uh, four copies of Tinkerbell, who I still think is worth the inclusion. Tinkerbell just really strong, gives you a much better, a better mid to late game. Uh, we're also running three copies of Robin Hood. Specky was, was running these originally, has opted to cut them, but still putting some work for Patrick, just being a four questing character. That's nice pressure to either catch up or just close that gap to get you to game. Also nice that he's out of Madame Medusa range. Gets banished by Along Came Zeus, but you can't have everything. And then there's a very similar song package. So yeah, some differences, but Emerald Steel Discard putting in another really good show. Definitely a deck to respect. So congratulations to Patrick.
Going into top eight, we have our one and only Amber Ruby Mufasa deck, courtesy of Tomaz. I'm a big fan of this deck. Mufasa, the key piece, five cost inkable, three, three, quest for two. And when he's banished, look at the top card of your deck. If it's a character, we can play it immediately exerted. Only running one card um, in here that which isn't a character, which is the four copies of Teeth and Ambitions, just to give us a bit of a better early game, because that's where this deck can really struggle against aggro. So I don't mind the Teeth and Ambitions included. I think personally I'd be more um, inclined to go with be, um, uh, bare necessities, not be prepared. I think bare necessities is worth the include, just because we've already got quite a nice early line, running three copies of mini, um, always charming, just a nice one three stat line to deal with aggro, and hopefully you can get a couple of challenges out of it. We are running a four four rockstar stitch line, which can complement our characters, which are two cost or less. The stitches, the minis, the simbers, and the mother goffles to get some adoring fans and some more card draw. But Rockstar Stitch just being another good aggressive quester. We are just a mid-range aggro deck, really, at our core. Simba's also good with the bodyguard ability. Going to protect our more important pieces, like our docks, um, our, uh, our Mauis, if we want to get more value. Simba just still a very strong card. Four copies of Mother Gothel to work with our Rapunzel for some card draw. She puts three damage on herself, on herself as soon as she's played. And, of course, Rapunzel, you draw a card for every damage that you remove from a character, up to a maximum of three. So that's one of our primary ways to draw along with the four copies of Surf, um, Carefree Surfer Stitch, 4-8 Quest for 2. If we've got two characters on board, we can draw two cards. So we're pretty much all in on this being our card draw. Yes, Rockstar Stitch can draw us off of Adoring Fans, but it's not really a um, consistent refreshing of resources. You really want the Stitches and the Rapunzels for that. We're running four copies of Doc, two, three, quest for two, and whenever he quests, we pay one less ink for the next character we play, so we really want to get this down on turn three. So on turn four, we can play preferably Mufasa. Sometimes it needs to be the Maui if we need to answer a, um, answer an opposing threat, but just give us more bang for our buck when it comes to ink. Four copies of Stylish Surfer Mini, just an aggressive quester that de demands an answer, so you love to see it. Three copies of Prince Eric. I think the best home for Prince Eric is in this deck. Whenever he's banished, you can banish and a, cho uh, a banish chosen character. 2-2 two, two stat line is nothing to shout about, but it does give him nice synergy with Teeth and Ambitions. Questing for two, so they don't really want to let him just sit there and keep questing. They do want to take him out. It's a nice control. We're running two copies of Hydra, six cost uninkable, six five, quest for two. And whenever he's dealt damage, we deal the same amount of damage to an opposing character. So really good against steel decks, or we can just use Hydra to challenge into an opposing character. And then whatever damage we took from that challenge, we can do that damage either to whatever we challenged or something else on the board. So Hydra's really good. Uh, a three, two count of the ladies in red, three Tremaine and two Medusa. Medusa obviously being targeted. Tremaine um, gets around Ward, but if our opponent's got a big board, then they they can um, they can play around this, but they don't. They're not always going to have that board. And she's an aggressive quester. We've got four copies of Maleficent. Again, this is a, a wonderful hit off of Mufasa. There's also a world we can play this on turn seven or eight, depending on how many docks we might have out. So that's good. We've got one copy of Sherna Bog works really well in this deck that just goes through a lot of characters very quickly. Um, a great hit off of Mufasa, aggressive quester. Yeah, Sherna Bog is is very strong. And then the four teeth and ambitions, as I mentioned. So yeah, I like it. I'm I'm a more of a fan of bare necessities personally in Mufasa decks um, and I do see the reason behind mini um, it's just, just another one drop to deal with um, cursed merfolk you could also arguably play the piglet in this deck just to give you a bit more aggro but list as it stands it did very well for Tomaz so congratulations to them and now on to our good old-fashioned Ruby Amethyst Control. There were five decks that made top 16, only one of which made it all the way through to top eight, which was uh, Rafal here. With some Queen's Control, we've got a lovely set of one-drops, four minis, two Olafs, and four Rafiki. This is beautiful. I'm a big, big fan of this. Except we're not running crabs. No crabs in here. That's that 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 is a decision. I think crabs so good, and it's one of the main reasons to play high counts of um, these one threes. I think without crabs, arguably you could go Shona Box followers. There's still reason to run the one threes. They get around the teeth and ambitions. Let the storm rage on. Um, but we're running three crook for three coups. Go. I don't know. I, I think crab. I, I just think crabs really good. So I'm surprised not to see it here. Um, but I do like the count of one drops. You know, like. 
turn one you want something to put down so hopefully with 10 we should get that three copies of coups go for a, an alternative turn two drop and two um, he draws a card when he's banished so the card replacing itself is nice four copies of snake four copies of fox for the bounce four maleficent for the additional card draw which i really like stop you running out of gas three stylish surfer mini we don't have a lot of ag um, aggressive questers so she's a nice one to put down early or mid game and if they don't have evasive answers then she's going to get away with moida four copies of goat for the law four rabbit for the draw we're seeing one copy of Jim Hawkins to go with the four Queens Castle. Love the four Queens Castle. I think one Jim is fine. Um, sometimes you are going to get a lot of value out, uh, out of that, especially if you can do it on your turn five just before the opponent plays a whole new world, um, just to force more cards out of your hand and like make them not want to spend as long ramping because now you've got a queen's castle and a gym on the field that's netting you four lore every turn an additional card draw so it makes them really need to answer the board for maui we've got four two of the ladies in red four tremaine and two medusa i think is a little high especially if, since we're also running two copies of maleficent monstrous dragon which i've gone off of but again i said i've said it before i say it again better players than me still play the dragon so i still respect her and she's fun to play um yeah this maybe seems a little high of a ladies count to me but we are only on 13 uninkables i think that's fine maybe it's fine um again you, you mid to late game, especially in the mirror you want lots of these so yeah fine four copies of friends only three be prepared i'm coming a little bit more around to the idea of the three be prepared it's just a lot stronger against um emerald um because even if you draw it in your opening hand you hopefully mulligan it, mulligan it away you don't want to draw into another one um or just in the first few turns but against like sapphire steel um if you open with be prepared you want to know you've got a lot more copies in your deck. I don't know. I understand the three counts. Personally, I'm, I'm still at a four, but I respect it. And the four Queen's Castle, as we said. So, yeah, I'm a big fan of this um, this list. I think this count of ladies is, is fine, actually. Maybe I was um, too harsh at first. Because, again, it's only 13 uninkables. The main thing I think is weird here is no crab. Because I think crab is just so, 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 so good. Um, and how are you dealing with opposing stylish surfer minis? Like, what are you doing? You have you have no fish hooks in here. Yeah, I think lack of crab is strange, but it led them to top eight. So listen to the data. So congratulations to them. Coming into top 16 with some more Ruby Amethyst control. We've got two mini, one Olaf, four Rafiki. I, I absolutely like, if you just like running both of these because you like them both, all the, ma all, all the power to you, I would always advise run the Olafs because... There is a chance, like, again, if they see their Olaf, they're probably going to assume your Ruby Amethyst control. But there's going to be at least that twinge of doubt there that you could be running the Olaf with a different type of deck. I suppose putting down the mini, they could arguably think, oh, they could be playing Mufasa. But that's far less likely. I don't know. I, I would just go for the max count of Olafs, even though I prefer Minnie Mouse as a character. Uh, but yeah, a split here and four Rafiki. I don't know. I think I'd, I'd like I'd like this to be at least eight. I'm running two Crab, which is nice. Uh, but seven is fine. Two coups go, I think, is low. I think this is really good for helping you build wide boards. Um, but two is better than none. The four snake, four fox. Only three Maleficent, four goat, four rabbit. Um, the two crab here, as I said. We are running the two copies of Pinocchio, which I'm a huge fan of. One of the MVPs of Ruby Amethyst control this format. Really off offsets our opponent's um, tempo. Two copies of my uh, mini stylish surfer, which seems to me more to be an answer to opposing ones. Um, in combination with the crab, not as big as big of an investment in the stylish surfer, but still fine. For Maui, a one four of Lady Tremaine and of Tremaine and Medusa. Lots of um, different opinions on what these counts should be. A lot of different player preferences. But, hey, we like to see the ladies in red. Two Maleficent Monstrous Dragon, two Teeth and Ambitions, four Friends, four Be Prepared. The one Spellbook, which is really good in the mirror. I've dropped the Spellbook because it doesn't. It, it seems really bad into the rest of the field other than the mirror. And even in the mirror, like, it's good. You don't need it. it like, you've got Castles minis um it's fine though two copies of maui's fish hook which again i moved away from but i think it's still fine help you get to those bigger numbers for locations um for bigger bodies same as crab um again free use with maui another answer to evasive so yeah that's fine and two copies of the queen's castle so yeah that looks good um i i, I only question these one i think you just go three olaf um I, I, again there's an argument you could go three mini and they might think you're playing mufasa um but yeah, hey, go off, King. If you like both of these, then you run them. So, yeah, huge congratulations to you.
Next up in top 16, we've got Andrea with a four Rafiki, four Chernobogs followers line. We are running four Crab. Again, I, I think with the Crab, it's important to have a 1-3 just because you get so much more value from it. Um, boosting it to a 4-3, challenge something, you often survive the hit and then next turn you can play another Crab or bounce the Crab or you, you just get... You get more longevity out of the 1 3. But Shonabog's follow is really good just, being out, um, just to help us find key pieces and thin our deck a little bit more. And Rafiki hitting 3 is just, I think, staple at this point. Free up is a Kuzgo, which I like. The 4 Snake, the 4 Fox, the 2 Pinocchio to exert opposing characters, which I'm a big fan of. The 2 Maleficent for the card draw. I, I like the 4 Crab. Um, 4 Mini, I think it's fine. 4 Goat, 4 Rabbit, 4 Maui. A 3 2 split of the ladies in red. This is what I'm on at the moment. I think this is lovely. 4 Friends, 4 Be Prepared, and 4 Queen's Card. Super cookie color, super streamlined. Big fan of this build. I would just like a 1-3 to go with these crabs. But the Shunabog followers are fine. Congratulations to Andrea. Next up, we've got Harold also going, opting for the Chernobog's followers. Just three copies along with four Rafiki. The three coups go. A lot of this looks exactly the same. Three Maleficent, only two crabs, three Stardew Surfer minis. We're seeing two Yzma here, six cost inkable, four, four quest for two. When we play her, return a, a chosen character to their player's deck, and that player draws two cards. So we can just say goodbye to a threat or bounce our own characters to give us a bit more of a card draw. And again, she quests for two. A two, three um, split of the ladies in red, opting for three. Three, Madame Medusa, four friends, four be prepared, two copies of the Sorceress Spellbook. Um, one Maui's Fish Hook and two Queen's Castle. I'm, I'm not a fan of the Spellbooks, especially two, um, but I'm sure putting some work for Harold on this day, leading them to top 16. Um, but yeah, like these counts, two Queen's Castle, looks good. Congratulations to them. And now our last Ruby Amethyst list in top 16, we have courtesy of David, I called this Toolbox Control. We've got one Chernobog's followers, um, three Olaf, three Mini, and one Rafiki. I think this is strange. Um, eight one drops, uh, like, cool. Um, I don't know, I think Rafiki's so good, especially because we're running Pinocchio. Um, just, it's our turn one drop to then immediately answer things like Ariel and Doc and Ursa Deceiver of All. I think Rafiki's so important, so I think this is a strange split. I like the six one drops. I'd probably go six one drops and then four Rafiki. Um, but hey, what do I know? Three copies of Coos go, four Snake, four Fox, the two Pinocchio, as I said. Just one Maleficent, fitting it in there. Two Crab, three Goat, four Rabbit. We're seeing one copy of Prince Eric, um, just for a bit of extra control. Four Maui, a three one split of the ladies in red, opting for three Tremaines. We're seeing two copies of Madame Mim, Madam Purple Dragon, seven cost inkable, five, seven, quest for four, evasive. And I win, I win when you play this character banish her or return another two characters of yours to your hand so obviously this works great with our bounce cards um like our fox our rabbit our crab maleficent to replay it pinocchio to replay it lady tremaine and medusa and the one maleficent monstrous dragon we've got to play them um a bit strange uh, not often seen but i'm a fan uh, it makes me smile seeing the purple dragon so well done to you david three teeth and ambitions four friends four be prepared three copies of maui's fish hook and three copies of queen's castle yeah i'm not a fan of these this counter one drops I, I, I just think rafiki's so good um i think if you i think if this was yeah i definitely would want to bring this to three or four rafiki um yeah you cut the cut of shonabog's followers um, yeah, I'd probably just go to 4-4, four, 4-1-3s four, four and 4 Rafiki, that's just my preference. Um, but yeah, like, some tech stuff here, the 1 Maleficent, the 1 Prince Eric, um, the Purple Dragons, I mean, they're fun, and, like, they're, they're gonna be some games where they really, really help to just get us, help us re reuse our Pinocchios, our come-into-play abilities. Um, 3 Maui's Fishhook, I think, is high. I've always thought Teeth and Ambitions is a little mid, personally, even though, again, better players than me disagree, and that's fine, but my own opinion uh, i think tifa's it's 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 mid and ambitions um yeah I, I i just think some of these counts are weird and i think i would prefer to go to more some things being higher counts to just be a bit more consistent i think i'd lose the eric i'd lose a fish hook um try and go up to like a higher count of maleficent you probably want the four go i'm three's fine I don't know how I feel about this list. I, I, I like the inclusion of Mer Madame in Purple Dragon, even if I don't think it's optimal. Um, but yeah, led, de led David to top 16. Found all the tools they needed for the games they played. So congratulations to them. Going now to our one and only EA Tempo. Just win the game. Uh, represented by Lucas and... 
Let's chip the teacup, my guys. The, the the gentle soul. One cost Ingerville, 2-2. Two, two. Bruh, just run Archimedes if you want this stat line. He's right there. Our wise owl. Um, yeah, I don't I don't agree with this. I think this should be Rafiki, personally. Um, Lucas, if you're watching, please educate me. Tell me why I'm wrong. Tell me why I'm a fool of a took. Tell me why Chip the Teacup is better than Rafiki. Or anyone, tell me. I'm happy to learn. But I think this is wrong. <laughs> Personally, uh, the Shadowbox followers really good in this deck. Two snake, four fox. We've got two crab, four goat, four rabbits, four friends, three castle. And then going for our emerald cards. Four copies of Sir Hiss, who's a really nice answer to Stylish Surfer Mini. Um, and again, even not against Stylish Surfer Mini. He's a two cost that hits for three. And hey, if you can just sit there questing away if they don't have an evasive answer, then cool. Um, I like the inclusion as an answer to Stylish Surfer Mini. So fine. Four Ursa for the discard. Four copies of Kit Cloud Kicker to upset our opponent's tempo. Bouncing characters with two, or strength, or two strength or less back to their hand. The four Ursa Deceiver of all. Going to work, work really well with our friends on the other side. Our Mother Knows Best and our three copies of Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo. Which we'll come back to. We've got two copies of Wildcat Mechanic. Three cost Inkable, two, three, Evasive. And Disassemble, Exert, to banish chosen items. So respecting items, Fishbone Quill, Spellbooks, all that jazz. Four copies of Lucifer, the cunning, the most cunning of cats. And the, one of the most dirtiest cards in the game. Five cost Uninkable, two, two, Quest for two. When you play this character, each opponent chooses and discards either two cards or one action. If they don't have an action, this can just end games and just shut them down. Hey, sometimes even if they do have an action, it can end games and shut them down. Running three copies of the Genie with Evasive and a 3-4 stat line quest for two and Disappear. When you play this character, return a chosen character to their player's hand. So lock on our opponent out, bouncing the tempo back to us. One copy of Elsa to slow the game down. As soon as she's played, Deep Freeze. Exert up to two chosen characters and they can't ready at the start of the next turn. So really going to slow our opponent down. She's got a nice stat line out of range of both um, Madame Medusa and Along Came Zeus and questing for three is really nice. And yeah, back to the bibbidi bobbidi boo. Three cost uninkable song. Uh, return chosen character of yours to your hand to play another character with the same cost or less for free. So that's going to work really well with like rebounce the Ursula, make them discard more songs, rebounce the uh, the Merlin Crab, keep boosting something up Challenger 3, Challenger 6, Challenger 9, just to get rid of whatever. Um, maybe kick Cloud Kick and can return, bounce a couple of characters back. Obviously, Goat's gaining us more lore. Merlin Rabbit is drawing us more cards. Um, Genie and Elsa have great come, come into play abilities that we can get more bang for our buck out of, bibbidi bobbidi boo. But Lucifer in particular, my god, if they don't have an action, just discard four. That can just end games right there. Um, I think this is more of a control version, to be honest. I've called this EA Tempo. I, I, I think it's EA Control more than anything, just the way this is built. Um, but yeah, looks really good, other than Chip the Tea. I, 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 don't come after me, by the way. I like Chip the Teacup. <laughs> my, 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 I, I like my boy, he's cute, but like, <laughs> why? Why not just run Rafiki? And again, if you're going to run the stat line, the wise owl, man. Archimedes, he's right there. But huge congratulations to Lucas on the top 16 finish. Three decks left to look at, all of them being Ruby, Sapphire, Dime, Control. In top 16, we've got Angelina, another deck that's taking advantage of the Lucky Dimes ability to just instantly gain lore. Um, so we've got all the ramp for blue, but we've got all the control options for Ruby. We've got two copies of Queen of Hearts because this deck's early game is its Achilles heel. So it's nice to have those early answers to aggro and just early board threats. Three copies of Judy Hopps, respecting items, going to immediately remove those Fishbone Quills, those Lucky Dimes, things like that, and she quest for two, which is which is respectable. Two copies of Bell to work with the Lucky Dime. We've got two Grand Martala to be some card draw, because that is what this deck is lacking. We're basically all in on Flavisham. When it comes to card draw, so Grand Martala, just again, it's a draw one, essentially, but with a bit more choice over the draw one, so hopefully we're finding a key piece. Similar to Develop Your... Well, Develop Your Brain isn't a plus one. You're just replacing the Develop Your Brain, but just helping us find key pieces. Flav Flavisham's for the draw. Now we uh, equalise the board. We've got two two of the ladies in red, three Gaston, two copies of Scar, Vicious Cheetah, seven cost Uninkable, six five, quest for two, rush, and daddy isn't here to save you. During your turn, whenever this character banishes another character in a challenge, you may ready this character. He can't quest for the rest of this turn. So almost a mini be prepared, obviously more situational, their characters need to be readied, and you can only remove as many as Scar can survive challenging into but sometimes the board state can just be so that that is enough and Scar can just completely one um, wipe one side of the board 
And again, quest for two, so we love to see it. Four copies of Tamatoa to recycle our items, which is the four porp, the four fishbone quill, the two dime. We're also running th um, two copies of Maui's fish hook, which I think it, I think the, that I think this deck is the best place for Maui's fish hook more so than Ruby Amethyst. It's another card that Flavisham can remove to draw cards. We can recycle it with Tamatoa, the Sinji with Maui. You love to see it. Four copies of Maleficent Monstrous Dragon. Again, we ramp in, so we should have access to this nice and early. The Void Develop Your Brain to find key pieces. Four one jump ahead for the ramp. Three be prepared. We've talked through the items. And then three McDuck Mana. Four cost inkable. One nine and two passive law gain. Going to get you a lot of law if our opponent can't deal with it. So, yeah, Ruby Sapphire Dime Control. Once again, a really good showing. Didn't transfer. Um, trans transfer transfer into top eight um but still a really good showing so congratulations to angelina our next ruby sapphire dime control deck looking very similar we've got three queen of hearts here we also opt opting to run four copies of stitch little rocket two cost uninkable three one quest for one and rush really nice again just uh, the early game is where this deck struggles so it's nice to be able to have characters that can answer that and even in the mid to late game hitting three is not insignificant so you'd have to see it four judy hots for the items tala for the draw flavisham for the draw a lot of similarities here. Four Gaston, um, three Scar. Only two Maleficent Monstrous Dragon. I think I would want this at a high. Oh, to be fair, we're not playing any one jump aheads. Um, Fishbone Quill is our only ramp. Um, but, yeah, actually, I suppose that's fine if you're not going to run, run the one jump aheads. I'd probably find room for more, but it's probably fine. For develop your brain, for B prep, tooth shield of virtue, which I really like. Just another cheap item that we can put down to fuel Flavisham, and it just has a lot of use in and of itself, being able to protect our characters. The four four uh, four porp, one fish hook, four quill, um, two lucky dime, and we're also seeing four copies of Montanui, two cost inkable, one five, um, and whenever a character there is banished, um, you can add that card to your ink well. So yeah, with that, I, th I definitely think I'd want a higher count of Maleficent Monstrous. Dragon. Um, I think I'd probably find room for the Hey Hey. Um, we're not, we're not running McDuck Manor. Yeah, that's probably fine. I think I just want a higher count of Maleficent Monstrous Dragon. I'd probably cut one or two stitches. I do like the stitches. Um, but I think these are pretty consistently online. Uh, but other than that, deck looks really good to me. Congratulations to them. And last but not least in top 16, we've got Alexander. A very similar list to what we just looked at. Uh, three Queen of Hearts, the three Stitch. Uh, no Grandma in here. We've got the four Flavisham, two Nick Wilde to recycle our Porpsicles. And he's an aggressive quester and the four Willpower is pretty good. The four Maui, we're seeing a 3-3 three, three split of the ladies in red. Our previous list opted, opted not to run any of the ladies. Um, and I think this is a really good deck for them. So love to see this. The four Gaston, the four Tamatoa, the four Maleficent. Four Develop Your Brain, four. Uh, three B prep, the traditional item package, four McDuck Mana instead of the Montanui, one copy of Lucky Dime. I think one count of Dime is probably low. We can recycle it, recycle it with Tamatoa, uh, but I just think it's such an important kit, uh, card in this deck to make it work at full capability. We're not running Bell, so we're not really, really all in on it. I don't know, I just still think Lucky Dime's really good. Uh, but yeah, most differently, we've got four copies of Winnie the Pooh. Three cost inkable, two, three, quest for two. Whenever this character quests, you can put a card from your hand into your inkwell face down. Uh, there's been lots of conversation about Winnie the Pooh versus Mickey. I am team Mickey Detective. Um, there are some situations where with this Winnie the Pooh is going to be better. If it survives, then it's questing away and you can get multiple um, uses out of its ability. But it's not an assured thing. It takes away from your hand, which can be fine if you've been able to draw a lot off of Flavisham. Then it can be fine. Personally, I'm a bigger fan of the Mickey Detective, but it's not the first time that Winnie the Pooh has done well. So respect it. Um, but yeah, other than that, deck looks good. Congratulations to Alexander. And that is it for the top 16 deck lists for the Poland event. Again, if you came between 17th and 32nd, I'm really sorry. Hopefully we'll get you in the future. Um, I feel like this video has been a bit all a, a bit all over the place. Kind of like that sentence because I'm getting back into the swing of things and I've had to get up and come back and sit down a few times because the engineer did come to do the internet and I now have internet. So after I've edited this, uh, I can get it uploaded and then hopefully tomorrow I will do the 10K. But yeah, I feel like this video is definitely overrun. And apologies if it's not been the cleanest um but it's good to be back i'll get back into the swing of things but we'll leave it there but thank you so much for watching if you're brand new to the channel please subscribe for all things lorcana hit the like button to show your support and we'll see you soon